This video will be the first of several focused on Unity ML Agents, which is a great toolkit for adding machine learning capabilities to Unity. It's been a while since I've made a new video. For the past few weeks, I've been busy putting out a new version of my NPC Populator asset in the Unity Asset Store. And I've been spending a lot of time on other things, including, believe it or not, working as an extra in the production of a new television show. The experience was very much like being a real life NPC. A production assistant would tell us to walk to a certain spot, very much like a waypoint, turn around and walk back. I do want to celebrate that I've gotten my first professional haircut in over a year since before the pandemic began, and also that this YouTube channel now has over 200 subscribers. I appreciate all of you who are interested in these topics related to AI and game development, and especially human models and behaviors. This video takes us in a new direction that I think is very interesting. I hope you enjoy it, and I plan to get back to a more frequent rhythm of creating these videos. Please do consider subscribing if you are interested and want to continue following this video series. Unity has this package called ML Agents to provide a machine learning capability. This is very powerful, but is also a complex topic. You can create agents in Unity that learn using artificial neural nets and can develop complex behaviors that you don't have to program. The results can be unbelievable and seem almost magical because the agent's behaviors can be surprising. Here's a simple example, although not really humanoid, just heads. These cube characters are machine learning agents that are really good at balancing balls. The simulation includes physics, so there is gravity, the balls have mass and momentum, and balancing the balls is not easy. If you were to write traditional code to balance the balls, I think it would be very difficult to get it to work. You might think of having if conditions, like if the ball is approaching the edge of the cube, tilt the cube the other way. But how much do you tilt it? And how fast do you tilt? Unless you get it just right, the ball is going to fall. But using a neural net, these cube guys easily learn to balance the balls almost perfectly. The technical approach used by Unity ML Agents is called Deep Reinforcement Learning. I've looked at a number of introductions and tutorials to Deep Reinforcement Learning and ML Agents, but I haven't, I haven't been very satisfied with any single teaching approach. The reason is that on the one hand, there are academic textbooks that cover the theory and mathematics of deep reinforcement learning, but you can spend many hours studying these textbooks before doing anything practical. On the other hand, there are tutorials for tools like ML Agents that jump right into how to install the tools and then very specific low-level code examples and specific commands to run that may not be clear about the context of why you do things the way that are described, what you're really doing when you follow the instructions, and what, what other options you have. For me, to learn ML Agents, you know, I've done some of each. I, I've read through some textbook material, and I've looked at tutorial examples. In this video, and some more that will follow, I hope to summarize the best of both of these approaches, as though we were sitting together and I am explaining how ML Agents works by describing the main concepts and drawing some whiteboard diagrams and then showing some examples that will hopefully make sense in that context. This video will be mostly on the fundamental concepts and then I will make more videos that will show examples. So let's start with some general background on deep learning. 
You can find information that goes along with this section in a variety of places, including even Wikipedia. To begin, let's consider biological nerve cells, or neurons, and artificial neural networks. Nerve cells receive input signals, usually from many other nerve cells and also from sense organs, combine these signals in some way, and then generate output signals used by still other nerve cells or by muscles. So there is a loop between your senses, which receive information about the world around you, and your muscles, which allow you to interact with the world, with extraordinarily complex interactions going through your nerve cells, even interacting with your memories and your reasoning capabilities. Artificial neural networks were inspired by biological neural networks. Because the artificial ones are designed by people, they tend to have a simpler and more regular structure where there is an input layer of neurons on one end, an output layer of neurons on the other end, and any number of hidden layers in between. Each artificial neuron is sometimes called a node. Each node executes a mathematical function on its input signals to generate its output signal. Typically, there is a weight applied to each input. The weighted inputs are added together, and then there is usually an activation function applied to the result. The learning or training process for artificial neural networks is to find the best set of weights on all the inputs of all the nodes. There are complex mathematics for training artificial neural networks that date back all the way to the 1940s, but large-scale networks did not become practical at a low cost that you can even do, you know, do at home and, and train neural networks at home until the last decade or so. You can learn more about how the mathematical learning processes work, but even without doing that, there are tools, including Unity ML agents, that implement a lot of the complexity for you. So you may have heard the term deep learning. This refers to a neural network approach where there are many hidden layers to the neural net. During the learning process, the layers may self-organize into some layered structure. For example, suppose we are training a deep neural network to recognize street signs, which of course is something that self-driving cars would need to do. In the learning process, different layers in the network may learn to solve different parts of the problem. For example, some layers may recognize low-level geometry like edges and lines. Other layers may recognize shapes like circles and octagons. Still other layers may recognize colors, words, and the complete sign. The developer doesn't control how these layers of neurons get organized. The organization emerges from the automated learning process. Solving such a complex problem as recognizing street signs likely would not work with a shallow neural network. Here's a few other facts about deep learning. The training process is computationally intensive, but runs much faster by using GPUs, even up to 100 times faster. There's a lot of great open source software, for example, TensorFlow from Google, which is used by ML agents under the hood. Python is the usual computing platform. There are a few different branches of deep learning. In supervised learning, the neural net learns to correctly categorize data, for example, picking out images that contain cats. The training is done using a large set of data for which the correct answers are known. For example, we could have thousands of images and label them as containing cats or not. This is input to the neural net's training process. If you've watched the TV show Silicon Valley, you may remember the famous scene where Jin Yang developed an algorithm to recognize hot dog or not a hot dog. In unsupervised learning, data is sorted into different categories, but we don't know a priority what the categories are. The network learns to recognize similarity among the input. An example of this could be a music recommendation system which sorts 
thousands of songs into groups based on characteristics of the songs and then recommend similar songs to you after you tell it a few songs that you like. In reinforcement learning, there are goals, perceptions, actions, and rewards. The neural network learns behaviors that optimize the rewards over time. This is the most relevant for game AI and is what ML Agents does and what we will focus on for the rest of this video and, and this video series. So let's go into more detail on deep reinforcement learning. The ideas in the next few slides and much more can be found in the book Grokking Deep Reinforcement Learning by Miguel Morales. This diagram, taken from the Grokking Deep Reinforcement Learning book, shows how it works. You have an agent, which is some AI-driven object that can interact with its environment. The agent perceives or receives information from the environment. The agent makes a decision about what to do and then takes action based on that decision. That action may affect the environment, which is step number three. That closes the loop so that the agent may receive a reward and gets new observation. This flow resembles any closed loop system. What is special about deep reinforcement learning is that in between steps one and two, a deep neural network is used to make the decision about what action the agent should take. Here is a slightly different version of the diagram that I made. Let's think of the agent as being a human non-player character or NPC. We can always think of the loop of receiving sensory input, making a decision, taking action, which may affect the environment, and repeating. I've explicitly added the step of making the decision. Let's renumber the steps and then think about all the possibilities. What data might the NPC sense from the environment? Maybe there is some kind of vision and hearing in addition to the internal state of the NPC. What kinds of actions could the NPCs perform? Almost anything we can think of, searching, approaching something new in the environment, running away from it, attacking it, and so forth. Then we have the complex and nebulous question of how the decision is made. In my previous videos in this series, we developed non-player characters that would walk from waypoint to waypoint. The sensory input was simply, how close is the NPC to the next waypoint, and have we gotten there yet? The only decision was which waypoint should be the next destination, and the actions were to walk to the next waypoint. So even that simple approach fit this framework. We can build on that into this more general approach, so we can look at more complex sensory inputs use deep reinforcement learning to develop a neural network that makes the decisions and have a wider variety of actions besides only walking. So this is a lot more interesting, but let's also keep in mind that deep reinforcement learning is not the only way to make the decision. We can also try something simpler, like having a set of heuristic rules. We can also look at goal-oriented action planning, or GOP, which chains rules together. So there are a lot of things to try, and I have a lot of videos to make. For the time being, let's focus on deep reinforcement learning and Unity ML agents. Maybe someday we can have a non-player character in a simulated battle or competition with decision logic implemented in different ways and see which approach wins. Any deep reinforcement learning problem needs to follow the structure. I found this to be the key for myself to understand Unity ML agents. This is explained in the textbook, although I haven't seen it in other ML agents tutorials. To set up a problem that can be solved using ML agents, you need to clearly define what is your agent, what is the goal of your agent, what is the environment, and that's defined as everything that is not the agent. What actions can your agent take? What observations 
can your agent make about the environment? And what rewards does your agent receive as reinforcement that it is making progress towards its goal? Once you have clearly defined all of these, then you can configure ML agents so that the neural network will learn the best actions to take based on its observations. Again, I can't emphasize enough that the key to reinforcement learning and to using Unity ML agents to develop AI behavior is to make sure that you have very clear answers to these questions. That may all seem a little complex, so here is an example problem that can be solved using reinforcement learning, again from the textbook Grokking Deep Learning. This is called the Frozen Lake Problem. This is a paper exercise rather than a computer game or simulation, so it may seem a bit static. The environment for this problem is simply this 4x4 grid. The goal is to traverse from cell number 0 to cell number 15. The agent is really the cell location, so it's one of the numbers between 0 and 15. There is a rule for this environment that if the agent is in one of the cells containing a square, meaning cells 5, 7, 11, or 12, the agent falls through the ice and loses. The observation is simply that the entire grid can be seen. The action that the agent can try is to move one square in any direction. However, the frozen lake is slippery, so the agent only has a random one-third chance of moving in the attempted direction. The other two-third probability is for the agent to make a slippery move in either of the other two perpendicular directions. So for example, if the agent is in square 8 and tries to move to square 9, the agent has equal chances to move to any of the squares 4, 9, or 12. If an action would move the agent outside the boundary, the agent just bounces back and stays in place. Very importantly for reinforcement learning, we need to define the reward. In this frozen lake problem, the reward is simply one point for successfully reaching cell 15. If the agent falls through the ice, it loses with no points. So that is a well-defined reinforcement learning problem. In Unity, we probably want to set up a game or simulation that is more interesting and dynamic than this one. I don't want this video to run too long, so this is probably a good place to stop for the introductory background video on ML agents. In the next video, I will show some of the samples that come with ML agents, how they work, and put them in the context of the framework that I showed in this video for specifying a reinforcement learning problem. In the video after that, I will show a more interesting example where ML agents creates a self-driving vehicle. And beyond that, we will try some experiments finally to get ML agents working for humanoid NPCs. There are different possible approaches, and I think we will be in somewhat uncharted territory at that point. This video was different from the others I have made in that it was all about concepts without building anything in Unity yet. I think though for ML agents, many Unity developers may not be familiar with these concepts, so it would help to have this introduction before jumping into examples. Let me know what you think, and consider liking the video if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, and if you want to continue on this journey of bringing deep learning to Unity NPCs, please do subscribe.